Hello again and welcome to Force Edu. In continuation to our series, on Total Quality Management, we present to you, the seventh episode of the series. The topic for today's video is, Cost of Quality, and Taguchi's Loss Function. Quality is concerned with, conformance to specification, ability to satisfy customer expectations, and, value for money. This is why, recognizing the cost of quality is important in terms of continuous improvement processes. So what is, cost of quality? It is the difference between the actual costs of producing, selling and supporting products or services and the equivalence costs if there were no failures during production or usage, according to the CIM official terminology. In other words, these are the out-of-pocket costs associated with controlling quality and the activities, required to correct failure to control quality. Cost of quality can be broadly classified into conformance and non-conformance costs. To better help understand these concepts, let us take an example of the apparel industry. Typically, the cost to eliminate failure in the customer phase is five times greater than it is at the merchandise development or manufacturing phase. Every time work is redone, the cost of quality increases. The obvious examples in the garment sector include the reworking of a garment, the retesting of performance of apparel, the rebuilding of a garment machine, the correction of a garment size specification sheet or change of care label, the reprocessing of the garment to improve dimensional stability after a wash or the replacement of trim to fulfill the requirement of a customer or to meet safety issues, and many more. Now, coming to the definition of the types of costs, conformance costs are those which are incurred to achieve the specified standards of quality, that is, costs associated with controlling quality. Whereas, non-conformance costs are those costs, which are incurred if the industry fails to control quality. Conformance or cost of good value can be further divided into prevention costs and appraisal costs. Similarly, non-conformance costs or cost of bad quality, can be further divided into internal failure costs and external failure costs. Prevention cost includes costs incurred in quality measurement and review, supplier review and quality training, that is, the procedures required by an ISO 9000 quality management system. In the context of our example, the costs of all the activities, specifically designed to prevent poor quality in a garment product or associated processes make up the prevention costs. For example, new merchandise review, quality planning, supplier capability surveys, Process Capability Evaluations Quality Improvement in Team Meetings Quality Improvement Projects Quality Education and Training, and many more. Appraisal costs include the costs incurred in inspection or testing, to ensure that products or services actually meet the quality standard. In the context of our example, the costs associated with measuring, evaluating the apparel merchandise or auditing related to production factory to assure conformance to quality standards and performance requirements make up the appraisal costs. For example, incoming and source inspection slash test of purchased material, in process and final inspection slash test, product, process or service audits, calibration of measuring and test equipment, associated supplies and materials, and many more. Internal failure costs are those which are added, if a fault is identified by the business before products or services reach the customers. In the apparel industry, failure costs that arise due to the deficiencies discovered before delivery of a garment to the customer and are associated with the failure to meet the needs of customers add up to internal failure costs. If internal quality failures of all the defective merchandise are identified before shipping then optimistically there may be no external failure costs. Some examples of these internal failures are Scrap. Rework. Reinspection. Retesting. Material review. Downgrading, and many more. External failure costs are those, which are added, if a failure is identified after the product slash service is in the hands of the customer. In the apparel industry, failure costs that arise after a garment unit supplies the product to the customer, such as cost of returned merchandise. Cost of quality claims, cost of transportation for the defective merchandise and personnel costs associated with these activities add up to external failure costs. These costs can be much higher than internal failure costs because the stakes are much higher. Examples of external failures are Processing customer complaints Customer returns Product recalls, and many more. Professor Genichi Taguchi said that cost is more important than quality but quality is the best way to reduce cost. Now, let us understand what is Taguchi's loss function. 
If any product or service does not perform as per the targeted performance level, fulfilling the customer's needs and expectations, the products or services create loss to the society. This loss can be seen in majorly two forms. The loss of the product costs including shipping costs, taxes levied on the product etc., termed as the tangible costs. And the loss of future sales, market reputation etc., termed as the intangible costs. Taguchi's loss function is a specific loss function used to measure financial loss to society, resulting from poor quality. His focus is more on controlling the variation in product performance. The main objective of quality improvement program should be to minimize the product performance deviation from its target value. Smaller the performance variation, better is the quality. And larger the deviation from the standard, the greater is the loss to the society, that is, greater the loss to consumer and producer together. According to Taguchi, the loss is directly proportional to the square of the deviation from the target, which is expressed in Taguchi's equation as Ly is directly proportional to the square of Y minus T. In order to convert it to equality, we multiply the LHS with a constant K and the equation can now be given as Ly equals to K times of the square of Y minus T. This can be further expanded by putting the value of K, which is half the ratio of M and D where, M is the producer's loss in monetary terms when the product tolerance D is exceeded. So the final equation becomes Ly equals to half times M by D multiplied by the square of Y minus T. The graphical representation of the loss function Ly when the performance Y of a product deviates from the desired target, T is as shown in the figure. A real-life example of the Taguchi loss function would be the quality of food compared to their expiration dates. If you purchase an orange at the supermarket, there is a certain date that is ideal to eat it. That would be the target date. There will also be limits for when to eat the orange, within 3 days of the target date, day 2 to day 8. For this example, day 5 represents the target date to eat the orange. That is when the orange will taste the best, customer satisfaction. You purchase the orange on day 1. But if you eat the orange you will be very dissatisfied, as it is not ready to eat. This would fall below the lower limit. On day 3 it would be acceptable to eat, but you are still dissatisfied because it doesn't taste as good as eating on the target date. If you wait for day 5, you will be satisfied, because it is eaten on the ideal date. If you wait until day 7, you will be slightly dissatisfied, because it is one day past the ideal date, but it will still be within the limits provided by the supermarket. If you wait until day 9, you will be very dissatisfied, as it will be too far past the ideal date. You are slightly dissatisfied from day 2 through 4, and from day 6 through 8, even though technically you are within the limits provided by the supermarket. The least amount of dissatisfaction occurs on the target date, and each day removed from the target date incurs slightly more dissatisfaction. Contrary to most discussions around specification limits, you are not completely satisfied from days 2 through 8, and only dissatisfied on day 1 and 9. To further understand the concept, let us solve a numerical based on a loss function. Consider an engine manufacturing company X, which is worried about the losses in lieu of quality management, incurred in the repairs of their engine shafts. The company management can afford a maximum loss of $12 for a shaft of 30 mm diameter. Now, the quality management team has determined the Taguchi's loss function to be Ly equals to 8000 times the square of Y minus T, where Y is the actual shaft diameter. T is the target value and 8000 is the proportionality constant, as per their company specifications. The company wants to determine the maximum tolerance that can be set, for the shaft diameter, which is the difference between the actual shaft diameter and the target value. Let's see, how, using the loss function, they can determine the same. To calculate the tolerance, we will substitute 12 for Ly in the equation, and solve the same, to arrive at the solution, which is Y. T equals to plus minus 0.0387 millimeters. Hence the tolerance for the shaft diameter should be set at 0.0387 millimeters. That's it for today folks. Hope you like this video. In the next video we will be discussing about Servcool model and capability maturity model that is CMM. So stay tuned. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And press the bell icon to get the notifications of our videos.